Thank you. It's an honor to be here with my friend and colleague, Member of Parliament Anna Roberts from just north of Toronto here. And she's, she's a fellow Ontario Conservative Member of Parliament. And, you know, Anna and I and, and great friends like Melissa Lanceman and other MPs have been active attending rallies with many of you in the GTA, uh, in Richmond Hill, on uh, Parliament Hill, as well as our leader, the Honourable Pierre Polyev, who has also been outspoken in the cause of freedom and democracy in Iran. And we were on Parliament Hill on the 800th, at the thousandth day anniversary of the downing of flight PS752. And we rallied with the families of the victims that were there. And, uh, and just as uh, Senator Housakis has said, there were great words from some of the government ministers, but lack of a follow through on action. It's also great to be here with friends from the United States, the great beacon of freedom and democracy in the world, and of course, always an honor to be here with the Honorable John Baird, I absolutely agree, Canada's best foreign affairs minister, blazed a trail. He, he blazed a trail and was outspoken in the world for freedom, democracy, and the rule of law, and led Canada in doing so. So thank you, John. So we are all here as friends in the Parliament of Canada and standing with you. And you ha we have today here present, and you've heard from already, uh, and you'll hear in videos from from uh, six members of parliament and one senator. So that's seven from the Parliament of Canada in total, but we do speak on behalf of many uh, who are with us and championing the cause. And so you'll hear videos from our Western colleagues, uh, James Bazan from Manitoba and Michael Cooper from Alberta, and so look forward to their words. We were, we were with, we were with uh, Madame Rajavi, uh, and the uh, parliamentary friends of, a Cana of the, the Canadian parliamentary friends of a free and democratic Ar Iran back in November. And that group is headed up by Judy Scro, who you've heard from, our, our colleague member of parliament, and as well, Michael Cooper, who you'll hear from on video. And we heard, of, uh, we heard Madame Rajavi speak about her 10-point plan and elaborate that in the meeting that we had back in November, and I know that she's touched on that as well uh, and articulated that in her speech here today. So it's, it's great to see you again. So Masa Amini's brutal murder woke up the world. And it woke up people in Iran, and it woke up people here that we've rallied with in the greater Toronto area, in Ottawa, and across Canada, and in other capitals and cities around the world. And the message has been clear. And the resistance units that the NCRI built up throughout Iran have been in the streets protesting. And these people, and all of us, are calling for freedom, democracy, women's rights, human rights, and an end to the tyrannical dictatorship in Tehran. But unfortunately, the regime's brutal response has also been clear for five months. Protesters killed, perhaps nearing a thousand. We don't even know the full story, including women and children, public hangings, shooting into crowds of protesters and over 30,000 arrests. Shameful. Which is why those fighting in the streets in Iran need to hear that they have support here in Canada, in the Parliament of Canada, and our friends in the United States in the Western world. So we stand with you here today. And the, the message people around the world are hearing today is, is much of what we've heard from the 10-point plan. Democracy is possible. Gender, religious, and ethnic equality is possible. 
an independent judiciary, a non-nuclear Iran, at peace with its neighbors in the region, there is a viable democratic alternative. So what needs to happen now? From, from our perspective in the Parliament of Canada, there are four things. One, list the IRJC as the terrorist organization that it is. We, we, we have been calling for the IRGC to be listed for more than four years. It was our colleague, Garnet Genuis, a Conservative MP from Alberta, that put forward the motion that was adopted by the Parliament of Canada to list the IRGC as a terrorist organization. And while the current government has leveled some sanctions against some officials, that's not enough. Follow, follow through and list the IRGC now. <laughs> Secondly, we must continue to seek justice for the families of PS752. There were 85 Canadian souls on that plane. Their families are grieving. We saw them on Parliament Hill this fall. Unfortunately, Early, uh, just a little less than a month ago, we recognized another sobering anniversary of three years since the IRGC shot that plane out of the sky in a terrorist act. And yet, the families still wait for justice, and there is no information coming forward from this regime. And as, as uh, has been already noted, including by our friend Senator Housakis. As this regime is starting to crumble, in 2023, we, we dearly hope is the year. And as it falls, Canada cannot be a haven for IRGC uh, thugs and their families and, and those from this tyrannical regime that are seeking haven. So we must continue to speak out on that. And fourthly, Canada has always been, under the leadership of, of John Baird and many before him and all of us, a strong voice, a leading voice in international organizations for freedom, human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. And we must continue to ensure that those who perpetrated these crimes, these crimes that we see behind us and in the hallway, and that we know and we see in the videos are brought to justice and that the human rights atrocities committed by this regime are prosecuted. So thank you, we are proud to stand here with you. Change is coming. It couldn't come a day too soon. Freedom will always prevail. Thank you.